हेलो एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू मोडिस इंग्लिश क्लास टुडे पोएम इज अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग पोएम हु इज द पोएट आई एम नॉट टेलिंग द नेम ऑफ द पोएम फर्स्ट आई एम टेलिंग द पोएट गेस व्हाट शुड बी द पोएम द नेम ऑफ द पोएट इज विलियम वॉटसवर्थ व्हाई ही इज फेमस ही इज फेमस फॉर हिज नेचर पोएट्री ही इज world's one of the best ever nature poets the history of english literature has ever produced so what's the name of the poem you guess it the name of the poem is daffodils so that is the poem which inspires lots of people in the world lots of students and here the sheer music is there the poem creates the music and here let me tell you the definition of william wordsworth poem what is the definition spontaneous feelings powerful spontaneous feelings overflowing and that is what is what is poetry for wordsworth so spontaneous overflow powerful feelings recollected in tranquility it it has happened in case of solitary reaper it has happened in case of this poem daffodils what the poet has observed the beautiful dancing of the daffodils but there he has not enjoyed it where does he enjoy it where did he enjoy it he enjoyed the dancing of the daffodils when he is alone in his room while he is lying on his bed so that's the beauty that's the beauty of wordsworth poetry nature simple human being common problems the problems of human beings and that is the central issue which always deals with wordsworth poetry and here daffodils is a poem which is really beautiful for the words to music and music to words where words represent music music represents words and here again wordsworth highlights that how nature is a thing of solace nature is beautiful it's tranquil it's peaceful it contentment happiness everything so he draws everything from nature nature is god to him and let us begin the poem daffodils the first stanza let me highlight the first stanza and i start the description of the first stanza look first line i wandered lonely as a cloud i wandered lonely so these words look common words for words what lonely wandered so first comparison that is a simile i wandered so i means what the poet traveled wandering aimless travel that is called wander journey is different wander is different i wandered lonely as a cloud how do clouds move clouds are moving lonely similarly the poet is here alone he is moving alone that floats on high over vales and hills where do the clouds float clouds float on high over vales and hills vales means valleys hills and valleys when all at once i saw a crowd interesting line who is the crowd here what is the crowd here so here crowd is daffodils what is the definition of crowd a group of people jam packed a group of people together then only we call a crowd two people cannot be called crowd three people cannot be called crowd so definitely jam packed and india is the best place where you can see lot of crowd suppose you are teaching a suppose you are teaching a topic to the students crowd management don't teach that topic in england and america you teach it in india why because in india everywhere you find you find crowd lot of crowd there and what's the crowd here here crowd is daffodils so here it's a metaphor why direct comparison when all at once i saw a crowd first line i wandered lonely as a cloud that is a simile the poet himself comparing himself as a cloud now here daffodils compared with crowd why daffodils are together jam packed just like the crowd 
people are jam packed together a host of golden daffodils what is the color of the daffodil golden beside the leg this is the positioning of the daffodil where we find the daffodils beside the leg beneath the trees beneath means under the trees beside the leg under the trees these daffodils are there fluttering and dancing in the breeze in what condition we find the daffodils the daffodils are dancing in the breeze breeze means wind the wind is passing and the daffodils are fluttering and dancing so what a beautiful scenery for the onlookers for the visitors the poet has observed this beautiful scenery now move to the second stanza so what's the highlights of the second stanza now i am moving just find out what does the poet highlight in the second stanza and here the second stanza goes like this and let me highlight the second stanza and analyze the second stanza before you this is the line continuous as the stars that sign so daffodils are shining just like the stars continuous as the stars that sign and twinkle on the milky way twinkling what is the meaning of twinkling shining milky way galaxy so here daffodils on earth compared to the things of the universe that is the galaxy in the galaxy you see the stars are twinkling shining and here on earth the daffodils are shining so that is the comparison that is the comparison they stretched in never ending line never ending line is it possible not at all so this is the use of hyperbole when the world is limited when india has a geographical boundary and here the poet is talking that the daffodils are stretching in never ending lines so this is the hyperbolic expression what is hyperbole it is more than exaggeration it is unreal description no reality is there they stretched in never ending line why does the poet say because his eyes can't reach poet's eyes can't reach the description of daffodils along the margin of a bay so where do they stretch along the margin of a bay margin means border bay means here the lake so near the side of the lake the daffodils are stretching in never ending line they spread in never ending line poet's eyes cannot reach that 10000 so i at a glance look at the number of the daffodils the poet has used the word 10000 what is that has the poet counted the daffodils answer is no then how can he say 10000 what's the literary figure used here what's the literary term so it's exaggeration means it is falsely presented something more 10000 so i at a glance the poet is comparing means large number of daffodils are there that's why this is the exaggeration used what is exaggeration it may be real but not realistic description something more something more tossing their heads there look at the word there always he use there for human beings but here for daffodils the poet is using there what is that it is personification what do you mean by personification personification means when inferior things lifeless things are compared just like the human beings that is called personification from person it is personification and here here daffodils are personified why the poet has used they for daffodils tossing their heads in sprightly dance how the daffodils are dancing the daffodils are dancing in a lively manner what is the meaning of sprightly dance lively dance so dance is lively so the daffodils are dancing beneath the trees beside the lake and they are spread they, they are spreading in never ending lines what is the description that is the hyperbolic description now i am moving to the next stanza third stanza and let us see how does the poet describe the third stanza and here in third stanza again we find some great lines you all of you look at that the waves beside them danced here there is a comparison of dance two dance going on what are the two dances one dance produced by daffodils 
and what is the other dance other dance is the waves of the lake you see how the waves are going the waves are going in this fashion so there is a comparison and we have to say according to the poet which dance is better now let us move to the line the waves beside them danced but they they means daffodils outdid what is the meaning of outdid outdid means surpass or excel surpass overtake excel outdid the sparkling waves in glee how do the waves appear sparkling the waves are sparkling means shining lightening shining why because of the sunlight because of the sunlight you see the daffodils are shining the waves are shining but here in the comparison of dance the daffodils are ahead in comparison to the waves why the bending and stretching of daffodils is more in comparison look at the waves the waves are moving like this look this is the daffodil how do the daffodils are bending how they are bending they are bending in the breeze they are bending in the breeze so the bending is more in comparison to the waves this is the line how did the sparkling waves in glee a poet could not but gay gay means happy so by observing such a beautiful scenery by looking at such a beautiful scenery what's the mood of the poet the poet is in real happiness ecstatic joy so he is according to the word gay gay means happy how did the sparkling waves in glee the poet a poet could not but gay in such a jocund company what is the meaning of jocund company means happy company so what what is what is the company here dancing of the daffodils dancing dancing of the waves and the poet so these three things compare and compound together as a jocund company the poet is part of a company the daffodils are part of the company and the waves are part of the company so here comparison between the dance of the daffodils and dance of the waves poet is also enjoying this type of dance so this is a beautiful company the formation of the company taking the three elements look line in such a jocund company i gazed and gazed the word is repeated why do we repeat the line or words why we repeat the words we repeat in order to highlight in order to give attention you have to give focus look at line in such a jocund company i gazed and gazed the poet could not take the eyes off the poet could not take the eyes off why because he is delighted by the dancing of the daffodils he is delighted by the dancing of the waves and he is enjoying such beautiful scenery he could not take the eyes off i gazed and gazed but little thought what wealth last line is important another metaphor another metaphor used what wealth the soul to me had brought according to the poet this is the richest to wealth to the poet a poet cannot be happy if you give him millions of rupees a poet can be happy if he goes to the river side if he goes to the natural surrounding here similar things happening the poet is saying that what wealth what wealth means what property is there and no material property can give whatsoever such a pleasure such a jocund company which he receives by looking at the dancing picture of the daffodils and the dancing picture of the waves what wealth the so which so the dancing of the daffodils and the dance of the waves that is a show which gives happiness to the poet the so to me had brought so this is the comparison what does the poet say that the dancing of the daffodils and the dancing of the waves has provided him the greatest wealth no material wealth no material prosperity can give him joy than this dance this natural surrounding that that this beautiful scenery which his heart is filled with joy now let us move to the next stanza and what does the next stanza explain to the readers and look at the i am highlighting so the next stanza this is of course the last stanza all of you look this is the last stanza and uh, all of you look at it very important stanza here it is for opt opt means here often 
Opt means here often, many times. For opt, when on my couch I lie. Couch means what? Bed. For opt, when on my couch I lie. Lie means not sleeping. So there is difference between lying and sleeping. Sleeping means you are out of sense. When you see the dreams. But lying means not in sleep, but just relaxing on the bed. In vacant or in pensive mood. Vacant, you know, blank. Pensive means thoughtful. Whether the poet in thoughtful mood or in vacant mood, they, they means the dance of the daffodils. They means the daffodils, the dancing of the daffodils. They flash upon, flash back, return, flash upon that inward eye. So that dancing daffodils, the picture of the dancing daffodils returns to the inward eye. What is inward eye? That is the mind side. That is imagination. That is the thought. So that is the thought of the poet. That is the imagination of the poet. That is the third eye, which is not visible. That is the mind side. So in his mind side, in his memory, the dancing daffodils returns while the poet is lying on the bed, which is the bliss of solitude. Bliss means immense happiness, great joy. The poet receives great joy when? When he is alone on his bed. He is not sleeping. He is lying. And that is the solitude. And what is the bliss of solitude here? So solitude is not negative to the poet. Solitude is a blessing to the poet. He is deriving pleasure. Which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills. The poet is saying his heart is filled with pleasure, joy. Why? Because he is getting immense pleasure by, by the thought of the dancing daffodils. When the thought of the dancing daffodils returns to his mind side, he is excited, he is happy and dances with the daffodils. So this last line is important. The poet himself is dancing with the daffodils. What? So when he memorizes, when the flashback returns to his eyes, so the poet himself joins the dancing of the daffodils. So he lost himself and in his mind's eye, he is enjoying that bliss of the moment. He is enjoying the bliss of the solitude. So that's all about the poem. Thanks a lot for watching this poem. In my next class, I will see you and give you more poems. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.